Hey guys, so the topic for today will be about the remote commands inside of Zabbix. Um, just recently somebody in the comments asked to talk about uh, this quite an old but still useful feature inside of Zabbix. So there we go. Uh, in my installation, uh, just like usually from the Docker Compose files, I have a version 4.2.1, but don't worry, it's not a new feature, it's available even in 3.0. So you still will be able to use it even if you don't have the latest release of the Zabbix. What I have here is uh, a default uh, host from the Zabbix server, actually not that important in this video. Then I have installed a Windows, uh, I've installed an agent on my Windows host, so on this machine in which we're creating a video. And there's also a host called localhost, which is a Zabbix agent in my uh, docker container so just like the server front and other stuff about the remote commands what's what's the idea behind it and what we can achieve with it first of all you know that uh, there are items on the agents that are responsible to collect some kind of the metrics but usually those are fixed item keys that will be responsible to let's say get a system cpu load a free disk space state of some service or stuff like that in previous videos, we talked that it is possible to extend the functionality of the Zabbix agent and use user parameters, which means that we will have to go to the configuration file, uh, add the new user parameter, restart the Zabbix agent uh, service or, or binary, and then the new key will be created. And uh, well, it basically can do whatever we want, depending on what we've specified in the configuration file. Um, then, the parameter in the agent config file. Let's open one on my local host zabbixagentd.conf and uh, there are two parameters. First of all, enable remote commands equals zero. That is the default value and by default when you install a Zabbix agent, remote commands are not allowed. So even if you will try to use it from the front end, it will not work. And the error message will be exactly the same remote commands are not allowed on that host then the next one parameter is log remote commands which also by default is zero so turned off and if you will enable it all of the executed remote commands from this agent will be also written to the log file of the agent so later on you will have some some kind of an audit log and you can follow who executed what then why uh, why do we need this and where can we actually use this? First of all, there is one item in the Zabbix agent that is called system.run. And uh, I believe I can use it from the CLI. Yeah, I do have a Zabbix get. So minus s localhost 001 and uh, minus key system.run and then in the parameters so in the brackets it is possible to write any command you wish and uh, uh, let's add this in the quotes there we go the response of this is uh, one two three so basically we are using the runtime uh, remote command on the agent if i will edit my agent uh, config file and comment out enable remote commands then save and quit systemctl restart zabbix agent then try to execute this command again so system.run echo one two three uh, i will get a error message not supported remote commands are not enabled so to use a system run key on the agents you must open the configuration file of the agent and enable remote commands uh, log remote commands is uh, upon your wish like if you want to log them in the log files then do that if no that's absolutely not mandatory why would we uh, want to use the system run instead of user parameters well uh, figure about a thing like uh, to add a user parameter we actually need to open that host perform the modifications uh, and restart the Zabbix agent. To use a system run, it is enough to add an item in the front end. So it's not a CLI tool. Like any other item, go to the host items, uh, click create a new one. Uh, the type will be Zabbix agent and a key system.run and in the brackets you need to enter the command. 
Then uh, that was basically just the smallest part about the remote commands because the second thing is uh, here in the Zabbix agent items we are using again the remote command to get some metric but we can use a remote commands to actually fix some problems after they happen it. So we are using remote commands together with an actions and instead of just sending an email we are actually executing a remote command to fix the problem. And for that, I actually have configured an example on my Windows host. So I, I do have a Windows host and uh, I'm monitoring my, my own computer and I've added a default operating system Windows template, which also has a Windows service discovery. So I am discovering all of my services on my Windows machine uh, that has a startup type automatic or automatic delayed and that creates uh, all of the uh, all of the items for for service state monitoring like like these ones windows service discovery state of service then the service name and the service description i believe in uh, in the brackets uh, it also has a triggers and triggers will fire when the service state will be anything but started so stopped not started uh, hanging some kind of error uh, by default it will produce uh, a problem in your front end if last three checks will appear as the service is not running we can actually create an action that will try to start a windows service each time when it will be stopped so since these triggers could produce a lot of noise and not always it is it is required to actually involve somebody from uh, let's say a support team to actually check it out log in on the machine and uh, perhaps start a service instead we can teach Zabbix to when the service is not running we want to automatically try to start it and then let's say if 10 minutes have passed and the service is still not running so we try to start it but for some reason we failed then we can send uh, some email to our support team how to do that in the configuration actions just like we've used to uh, we need to create an action that will be responsible for our windows services but we need to make sure that this action will work only on the windows services because well obviously the problem will be with uh, some kind of free disk space uh, it would be a bad idea to try to start or restart some service upon that problem and also we need to write a command and since uh, the example is on the windows command is pretty simple so uh, net where we have it net start and then the service name in the windows but of course the service name is dynamic so we don't know uh, wh what will be the service name because it depends on which trigger will go to the problem state but we can do and solve all of these problems in the template windows uh, service discovery so here on my windows host uh, on the windows service discovery i made a few changes first of all trigger prototypes i've added in the trigger prototype a description field with a low level discovery macro service.name which actually returns the discovered service name and then in the actions in my remote command net start i use this uh, trigger dot description internal macro that will actually reveal with an actual service name then for uh, conditions to make sure that uh, this problem actually is related only to the uh, windows services and only for windows services i should execute this remote command i've also added a tags a tags on the trigger prototype uh, with a tag name type and a value windows services so now i have, have all needed information configured in the low level discovery rules and i can proceed with an actions so going back to the actions in the conditions i have type of calculation doesn't matter here so conditions tag type equals win service so based on my configuration based on my logic since this rule this action these operations will affect 
only those triggers that has a tag value Windows services. So it means it is about a Windows services. And just for addition, I've added the additional condition which checks for the host group and will work with it only if it will equal to Windows because, well, obviously such command would not work on the Linux machines. Then operations, just like I showed you previously, it will be net start and trigger description and in each of those automatically created triggers from the trigger prototypes the trigger description will actually have the actual service name so from now on we can actually test this and uh, there will be some some problems already from some services that are not running but i will open my services uh, services uh, screen menu in Windows, background intelligent transfer ser service, which is bits, and I'm gonna stop it. Stop it, so now I can go to the monitoring latest data. Uh, the check is happening once per three minutes. Uh, so we will still have to talk some time until we will see the result. Uh, let's go Windows host and search for bits service. There we go. Uh, service bits, the last check is stopped, which was like seconds ago. Uh, we still need to wait two more checks until the trigger will fire and then we'll see if action was executed and did the service actually start it. So right now we can talk about, remember the system run key. And I have an example here in the, on my local host for the items. Uh, an item name was, let me check here, the second page, system run agent version. So there's the example. System run agent version, it uh, type is a Zabbix agent and a key is a system dot run. So it means we will be executing a remote command and just the command user has been uh, Zabbix underscore agent D minus capital V to get a version of our Zabbix agent and the response from this command would be the same as from the CLI. Right now the item is not supported uh, I believe uh, just because when we started this video for a couple of seconds I've disabled the remote commands on the agent. So let's go back to our Zabbix uh, dashboard there we go see a new flashing uh, problem um, actually some other service was stopped not the bits so that was not forced by me that happened by itself on the windows and you see the duration is five seconds it is not running and uh, we have one action executed and the action was remote command executed so right now Zabbix successfully started this windows biometric service and also we can see a type Windows service tag. Let's try to refresh the page once again. And uh, yeah, there we go also for the bits. So service bits background intelligent transfer service is not running startup type automatic or delayed. Duration of the problem is two seconds. Type of, of the tag is type and the value of the tag is win services. And let's refresh this again and we'll see that action actually executed. There we go. Uh, bits, one action executed. And the action was a remote command status executed green. So now we can actually verify in the services, background intelligent transfer service, double click. And we can see that its service status is running. So Zabbix automatically started the service that was not running and we saved up some, some time for our support team. But if we still want to notify um, somebody about a problem, if we fail to automatically fix it, we can just add another step. So first step that will run immediately is a remote command to try to start a service and then let's say uh, step 2.2 could be uh, send a message to some user groups after 10 minutes so it would look like immediately try to start it of course continue monitoring if the problem is still active after 10 minutes then notify our support teams in terms of these remote commands you must uh, 
you must know that the connections, uh, there must be a passive connection to the host. If the connection is only active, so incoming connections to the agent are not allowed based on the firewall specifics, Zybex server will not be able to execute a remote command on the agent. Um, remember, like we talked in the previous videos about active or passive agent modes, and you can choose. It can be one or another or both. But if your environment specifics uh, might be, let's say, cloud environment, don't allow any incoming connections, then you won't be able to use this functionality. So. That's about it, I guess, for today. Uh, Windows services is just an example. You can use this with all of the other problems and, and triggers and monitoring stuff on your uh, servers and in your infrastructure. So hope this uh, teached you something new and uh, go ahead, just do your own tests and uh, make Zabbix even smarter in your environment. That's it for today. Thank you for your time as usual. Any questions, uh, comments and other stuff in the comments and see you back in the next videos. Goodbye.